you are buying a water softener and you want to understand how to bypass the outside spigots or also known as silcox, right? So this video is all about helping you understand how a water softener should be installed in your home. I hope that you find it helpful. If you do, please press like, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe. I'd be very help, uh, grateful for that. So first and foremost, let's talk about, we're, we're going to use in this analogy a uh, city water supply. Now, it could be the same on well water because usually the water comes in in the corner or somewhere on the concrete side, basement side of a house. Yes, I understand if you're in Florida or warm areas, you may have water actually coming into the garage and this all this stuff is on the outside of the house. So this is somewhat predicated for all of us that are in more of a freezing area. So it's like about three quarters to maybe uh, more uh, of the America actually has to think about this. So that said, when the water comes in from the city, I'm gonna use an arrow to sort of show you the way water travels, right? So it's traveling basically in one direction. Gotta keep that in mind. As water comes in, it basically, unless you're on well water, travels in one direction. Even on well water, there's only a little teeny area that it goes back and forth. That said, you gotta think about, it's gotta come into a water filter. That's where we can actually filter the water. And then it then has to go and go to all the places. And the main places that you're looking at is to protect the kitchen, the bathrooms, uh, your water heater. So in essence, if you're gonna do that, we gotta know where we're gonna install the water softener. Well, most of the time, people will install it right here, right by the meter. I'm gonna put a little circle right there. So that would be the water softener. The problem is, as you can see, that water is gonna continue to go up to that outside silcock. This is an outside silcock. And that's an outside silcock. By the way, that would be have a water line to it. So these circles with an X represents outside faucets. And so that means we can turn it off. Now, since water travels in one direction, let's see what happens here. The water is going here. It's coming to the water heater. It goes to that silcock. It continues. It goes up. It goes up. And it goes to the bathroom. And this continues to go to the kitchen. Now, this cold water feeds the water heater. And then we have hot water going in one direction as well to those places that are using it. And we'll just put those little arrows in there as well. Now, what does that mean? If I put the water softener here, that outside silcock, that outside silcock is going to be on softened water because it goes through the softener. If I put it here, what's happening? It's putting that on soft water, that everything on the house. If you put it at the meter, everything inside and out is on softened water. Now, why do we not want to do that? Well, if you're watering your plants, we don't want soft water. The plants are looking for the minerals that are in the water, the rock and the magnesium. So you want that, not to mention a water softener can only soften about a thousand gallons of water per day. So what does that mean? If we run one outside silcock and it does five gallons a minute, Let's just do the math. For 60 minutes, that's 100, uh, what is that? That's 300 gallons of water uh, an hour going out on an outside silcock. So if we left the water softener here and you let that run for one hour, 300 gallons. You do that one, that's another 600 gallons. You're basically exhausting the filter material and we're not even talking about you using water in the home. So the plumber that's installing this, or if this is a DIY person, you want to relocate this. We want to put it somewhere where we can at least have a couple silcocks on hard or raw water. So in this scenario here, where would we want to have this water softener installed? Now, we w let's imagine that this is the front of the house. We're going to do watering. There's trees on this side, and there's a garage in the back. Well, maybe in the garage, if this is the garage area, and we're going to wash the car, we want soft water. We don't want rock to rinse off the water because it makes white spots. So that could be on softened water. So let's write the word soft here. We want that soft, but we want this one hard or raw. So we'll say raw, and we want this one raw. So that means we need to install this softener after this junction that's going to the raw outside silcock. 
and we want to install it after this junction going to this raw water. So in theory, we need to install it right here before the water heater, right? We need to, everything after that, water going into the water heater, going to the garage, going to the bathroom, coming back. Oh, wait, what are we going to do? Wow, look at that. We will have this on raw water. So what do we need to do? This is where a licensed plumber comes into play. This is why most states require licensed plumbers to install water filter systems. We cannot allow that to happen. So guess what we need to do? We need to take a cold water line after the water so softener and we need to connect it to that guy there. And by the way, well, actually the way that you write that is sort of like that. So you understand that it's going over that raw water line and now this would be soft water. And look at this, we have the arrow going in that direction. So that said, we now know that we need to have the kitchen on soft water. That's so that the dishes come out clean. We know the bathroom's gonna have soft water and we know this outside Silcox is gonna have soft water. And the only raw faucets now are gonna be the, the front of the house and the south side or the bottom of the house here. Again, this is an aerial view looking down at the house so that you can sort of understand the plumbing diagram of why that's so important. Again, licensed plumbers understand that water only goes in one direction, but if you're a DIY person, if you're doing it yourself, or you've hired a plum, a water treatment company and they really didn't talk to you about this, be very careful because the only thing you can do is if they did install it right here, every time you go to water anywhere outside the house, you have to go downstairs and bypass the water softener. So a good quality water softener will have a bypass valve on the back, so you can do that very easily. But again, you might be outside starting the sprinkler, go, oh my God, I gotta walk all the way downstairs and do that. It might be worth this extra plumbing and the relocation of that water softener over here by the water heater rather than up there by the meter. And again, something like that, let's say that that was 20 feet, we charge 10, $12 a foot, you're looking at you know, $400 to be able to put that guy over here versus over there. That said, what we hope is that this actually helps you understand bypassings of water softeners, how important that is. Also, it's important to understand a plumber can do this because they understand the direction of water is one direction and they know where to place that water softener so they can make sure that whatever faucets you want are going to be soft and whatever faucets you want to be on raw are raw. Um, I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Check out the link below, uh, angelwater.com. We are starting to sell products online coming soon. So if you need a water software, you can contact us. We'd really love to help you. And as you know, my name is Drew, and I'm here to serve you.